Fellow has just announced the brand new generation of their incredibly popular grinder, the Ode, and with that comes the second generation of burrs that will come standard with this grinder. So that means that we now have three burr options when you purchase a Fellow Ode, and so you're probably wondering what are the differences between all of those and will I actually notice any differences? So today we'll be taking a deep dive on all the differences between those three sets of burrs and if one of them is best for you. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm and I'm with Homegrounds, we're a place you can go to learn more about brewing and enjoying better quality coffee right at home. Let's dive right into the video. Now a couple things before we hop into the burrs themselves. First off, I just released a video all about the brand new Fellow O Generation 2. We will not be talking about the grinder itself in this video, we're only going to be looking at burrs. So if you're interested in this brand new grinder, be sure to check out that video. Also a word on transparency. Fellow did send me the second generation of their Ode to review and make a video for you guys. They are not paying me or telling me to say anything. They are not going to be seeing this before it goes live. But just so you know up front that they did send me this grinder. I did purchase an Ode originally with my own money, but yeah, just that ahead of time so you know. Now let's hop into the burrs. Now let's start off by quickly going over what burrs exactly are and then why Fellow has three options currently. Burrs are the metal grinding things that grind your coffee. In this case, we have a flat set of burrs. They are 64 millimeters, and it is two discs rubbing up against one another and crushing your coffee beans, and they will pull apart or go closer together based on how coarse you want your coffee to be. Now, there are a ton of different burr manufacturers out there, and they all build them slightly different, and those differences will yield different results, whether that being how consistent the grind quality is, or they could be pushing for maybe emphasizing certain flavors in your coffee, which kind of sounds ridiculous because they're just burrs, but they do make a difference in how your coffee tastes. So now why do we have three options for burrs with the Fellow Ode? Well, you see, when Fellow first came out with this grinder, people were very quickly disappointed in the burrs that were coming with the grinder. They just weren't grinding fine enough, so Fellow then offered an upgrade to SSP burrs, which SSP is a very popular manufacturer of burrs, they're fairly expensive. Fellow was charging an extra 186 US dollars to add those burrs on, but they were well worth it. People were happy with them. And Fellow said, we're gonna be working on a new burr set that will come out in a couple years. So fast forward to one month ago, Fellow finally announced their generation two burrs that they were selling for $80 on their website. And now they are coming standard with the generation two grinder. Now I'm not entirely sure what the future of the Fellow Ode looks like. Once this generation two grinder comes out, it kind of seems like the first generation is not really relevant anymore. The generation two is only slightly more expensive. It has better burrs and a couple extra features that make it worth it. So the first generation, I wouldn't be surprised if they just sort of phased it out over time. And so therefore those old standard model burrs would also be phased out. But that being said, we're still going to be including them in the review today because as of making this video, you currently have three options as far as burrs go when you purchase a Fellow Ode. So today I'm gonna to be doing two different experiments looking at a few different results out of those experiments. First, we're going to be testing the grind range and distribution. Talk about that later. But then afterwards, I'll be doing a taste test. We'll be doing a couple different tastes to really get a sense of what these burrs are doing as far as taste, and that's probably what's most important, the grind range and all of that is going to get nerdy and some people may like it, but feel free to just skip to later on in this video when I'm actually tasting the differences between these burrs. So let's hop right into how I measured the grind sizes for these burrs. So for this test, I used something called the Crew Sifter. This is a device that allows you to sift out different particle sizes in your ground coffee. So in here, we have a couple different layers. We have a bottom layer, which is to catch fines, and then we are given two layers of screens. And so for an example here, I have a layer of 500 microns and then a layer of 1300 microns. So I would set the 1300 on top of the 500, put the catcher on the bottom, and then I would pour my coffee grounds in here. And after shaking this for a while, what that's going to do is separate it into layers. So on the top, we'd have all the coffee grounds that are above 1300 microns. In the middle, we'd have between 500 and 1300 microns. And then on the bottom, we would have less than 500 microns. And so I bought the entire set 
of screens here ranging from 200 to 1600 microns. And so there I was able to actually measure the sizes of the coffee grounds that are being ground with each of the burr sets. And so I wanted to measure the grind sizes at three different grind settings for each grinder. I wanted to go on the finest possible setting, a middle setting, which in this case is right up at the top at six, and then all the way coarse. And for each of those, I basically did every single screen, finding out how many coffee grounds were in each layer, and then graph those out so we could actually see how many coffee grounds were at whatever range and how those ranges were spread out. Now I did these tests because I wanted to look at two separate things. First off, I wanted to look at the ranges that each burr set was capable of grinding at. Because like I mentioned earlier, the first version of the burrs could not grind fine enough for what most people were looking for, so I wanted to make sure that the second generation was doing a better job at that. The second thing that I wanted to look at in doing all this testing was the particle distribution graphs of each burr set. If you're unfamiliar with that, I've mentioned it in past videos, but it's basically looking at a graph and seeing what percent of the grounds lie in certain micron ranges. So ideally for a coffee grinder, we wanna have this bell curve that comes to a very steep peak at whatever grind setting you are looking at, because that means that you are not getting a ton of fines or a ton of boulders in your coffee grounds and they are all relatively at a consistent setting. So now before we hop into looking at the graphs and talking about the results, a couple of quick notes about my data. First off, I've only recently started using this crew sifter, so I'm still sort of working out the kinks with it. And so my data probably isn't, I know it isn't 100% correct. More so today, instead of looking at the exact results of each grinder, more look at the trends that we are seeing, because I was at least consistent from one burr to another. And so the graphs may not exactly represent the distribution of the grinds coming out of these, but at least they're consistent from one another so we can see how each burr set compares to the others. The other thing I wanna mention is that each burr set was kept in its corresponding grinder and not moved around from one to another. So there is a possibility that things other than the burrs were affecting these results, but I don't think it would be by that much. So we're gonna be kind of ignoring that today. All right, enough talking. Let's hop in and look at some graphs. All right, so the first graph that we're looking at here is the finest grind on each burr set. Now you can see we have the three lines here corresponding to each burr. And right away, the first thing we notice is that the generation one looks vastly different from the gen two and the SSP burrs. It is pretty terrible. So that's gonna be a trend we'll see today is that the gen one just doesn't measure up to the other ones, but I at least wanted to throw it on here so you can see. Now moving on from there, looking at the other two burr sets, the first thing that you'll notice is that the Gen 2 and SSP burrs are actually pretty well lined up. The SSP is slightly finer overall, but they both peak around 400 microns and neither have a ton of fines down here or boulders up here. They both kind of come up alongside one another and have really nice particle distribution graphs. So next we have the medium grind setting graph on the Ode. Once again, the generation one burr is just kind of all over the place. But then also again, looking at this graph, we have the generation two burrs and the SSPs lining up fairly well again. Once again, the SSPs are a little bit finer. We have about the same shape coming up here with a couple little peaks. So that is nice to see. One thing to note about as we get coarser and coarser is that it's my opinion that as a grinder gets Coarser, we are going to have less consistency in the range of particle sizes. I couldn't find any articles or graphs talking about this, but if you have any opinions or if you know of anything, please let me know in the comments down below. We can talk about that. And then lastly, let's look at the coarsest grind setting. Now this is the graph that I kind of feel least confident with. Do As you get coarser and coarser, the crew sifter gets a little bit harder to use and harder to gather data, but we can kind of look at the overall trend here. And that is once again, that the generation one burrs are very coarse, super inconsistent. And then the other two are fairly similar. The SSP once again are generally finer than the generation two and the generation two actually come up to a nicer peak up here. But I would say both are fairly consistent with one another. 
So looking at all these graphs, what can we actually gather from all this data? First off, the generation one burrs are pretty terrible and I would not recommend them for pretty much anyone. Now that the generation two burrs are out, if you have that option, definitely go for those. If you are currently using an older fellow ode with the generation one burrs, then definitely upgrade for the $80. Buy the generation two, install them yourselves. It's fairly easy. I would highly recommend it. The second thing we can gather from all this data is that the generation two burrs performed really well. They pretty much matched up with the SSP burrs, which the SSP burrs are a highly reputable company. They're very good burrs, very expensive, and the Gen 2s lined up pretty well with those. So that's a really good sign that Fellow did a good job developing these Generation 2 burrs. At least as far as the data goes, we'll get into the tasting later. The last thing that at least I learned from all of this data is that this was a lot of work and I'm not sure how worth it it was, but hopefully, <laughs> you enjoyed this and it was a little bit helpful. Now let's move on to the tasting part of this video. Now tasting is definitely going to be the most important thing that we can test as far as the differences in these burrs because the data and the graphs show you some things, but all we really care about is how the burrs are affecting the taste of our coffee. So I'm gonna be doing a couple different sets of brewing and tasting. We're gonna be doing one just grinding standard and brewing with it. And then we're gonna be doing another one using the crew sifter and sort of eliminating any fines or boulders that would be included in those grounds. Now the first brewing without the crew is gonna be more realistic for most people because most people are not gonna be using a sifter like this to brew their daily cup of coffee. You're probably just gonna be using whatever the grinder gives you. But then using the crew sifter, it will kind of even out the playing field as far as these grinders go by eliminating any of those outliers. And so we'll be better to taste the actual burrs themselves and how they are contributing to the flavor of the coffee. So for this, I'm just gonna be brewing with a Hario V60 on setting five on each of the grinders. I'm not gonna be showing you really much of the brewing process because that doesn't matter for here. So next time you see me, I will have some coffees here and we will taste them. All right, so I brewed all three coffees here. I decided that I'm gonna taste these blind to make it more realistic. They are written underneath the cups. I'm actually surprised I can't see anything in there, so we will get tasting. It's interesting because none of them are necessarily bad. This one in particular, it tastes pretty under extracted. It's a little sour, a little weak, a lot of acidity but not really a balanced cup. My guess is that those are the generation one burrs. We'll see. These two are both nice. This one here tastes a little more extracted, maybe a little over extracted. It's still nice, it's sweet. It's a little more balanced. It has a lot of clarity in it versus this one it has a pretty bright acidity. It's got a nice body, but not a whole lot of sweetness there. Based on my experience with all these burrs, my guess is this is the generation one burr. This is the SSP, which I also noticed was definitely finer than the other ones. If that is the case, that would make sense that this one tastes a little more extracted, and therefore this one would be the generation two burrs. So generation two and one. So these are the SSP. Yeah. Now, if we were really doing this right, I would probably dial in each of these burrs a little bit differently to get similar extractions, but I think that this is pretty telling. Let's move on to actually using the crew sifter for each of the brews. Now I have it set up currently using a 1300 micron as the high end and 500 as the bottom. I set that up earlier and found that that was a good range for a Hario V60. So we'll get more of an idea of how those burrs are actually affecting the flavor individually in the cup versus just the overall range. So I'm gonna brew each of those and then we'll talk about them again. All right, so I've gone ahead and did the second round of brewing. I had someone come in and rearrange these for me. So once again, I don't know what each one is. So let's get tasting these. My assumption right away is that this is the generation one. I made that face because it tasted super sour. Yeah, these are both once again really good. They're actually not as different as before. If I had to guess, this one tastes a little more extracted. It tastes very sweet, a little astringent and bitter, probably once again over extraction. 
but still really sweet, really good clarity of flavors. Really solid cup versus this one. It's also sweet, a little more acidic, more body. So this should be one. Indeed it is. These two could go either way. I'm guessing this, this is the SSP and it is. Basically, if we're looking at the differences in these burrs as far as taste goes, once again, like I mentioned, we're pretty much eliminating the generation one burrs. They are not good for really anything. The SSP burrs are designed in a way that you're getting a lot of clarity, a lot of uniformity. So you'll get cleaner cups of coffee, really sweet versus the generation two burrs are designed in a way that you are getting more body, a little more complexity and higher acidity. Not that either one is better than another, but maybe if you like really clean coffees and sweet, the SSPs might be great for you. If you like complexity, you like some body and maybe a little more acidity, the generation tubers may be better for you. If you are not sure, then just get the gen two because they're cheaper and still make really good coffee. So those are the three burr options when you're buying a fellow ode. Although these videos take a long time to make and it's a lot of experimenting, I really enjoy doing this type of stuff. So if that's something that you enjoy, please let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Also, if you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below. I am happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy brewing.